Hey guys again, my name is Jacek Adamczyk and here are top 5 things to remember when compositing in a footage. Okay, so you know what you want in your footage. You made it, you tracked it properly, but it seems off. Stands out from your footage and you can clearly tell that it doesn't belong there and comes off as amateurish right off the bat. We first need to identify why an image or footage stands out. Here is a list of my top 5 things to look for when compositing. First, image is too sharp. Second, brightness is different from the rest of the image. Third, colors don't match. Four, is too saturated. Five, there is no grain if it's a static image or even a freeze frame. And the bonus one, sixth, if it's a green screen footage, there's quite a bit more. The lights have too much, as well as the camera movement and the perspective. We'll cover the first five in this video. So let's jump into the After Effects and see what we can do. Okay, so what we want to do in this shot is place a logo or a billboard here and make it look like it was already there. So I already picked the logo and it's tracked. We covered the 3D camera tracker, we covered Mocha, we covered every tracking possible. So it's up to you which one you'll choose. I chose Mocha because it's a plane, it's a simple movement and it just fits right in here. So this is what our shot looks like before. You can clearly tell that it doesn't belong there. So what are the things we can do? Well, first of all, if you zoom in, you can clearly tell that the Adobe logo is way sharper than our bricks. So let's add a Gaussian blur and maybe let's go two pixels. Yeah, that seems about right. And this amount is almost always different. So you'll just have to adjust for your image. Okay, the next one. It's definitely too bright, but how can we tell if it's bright enough already or dark enough? Well, I have two ways to do that. First one, you can just use your eyes and if you squint just a little bit, you can see that the brightest parts of the image pop up. And if the brightest part, unless it's a fire or something like that, is the brightest, it's probably too bright. And the second way I'd like to check it is by creating an adjustment layer, adding a tint effect, which makes the whole image black and white. And now you can clearly see when something's too bright. Let's add levels to the logo and watch our brightness. That seems to be matching the sky more or less. It should be even less. So yeah, that looks good. So now we have this. Okay, we have our sharpness, our brightness. It's definitely too saturated. So I'll add the tint effect and leave it at about 25%. Looks good. The next thing is colors. Overall colors don't really match the scene. It's definitely too warm and it doesn't really look right. So what we want to do is turn off the tint, but add the Gaussian blur on our adjustment layer. So we blur everything and turn on repeat the edge pixels so we won't get edges to spill over. Now that it's blurred, let's add the tritone effect. It basically remaps colors to new values. For shadows, we have to pick the darkest part because we don't want our composite to be the darkest or brightest part of the image. It just has to blend in. Let's find the darkest spot we can. I think it will be somewhere here. We blurred everything so we really have the blend of colors, not any one specific. As far as highlights, let's go for a sky, maybe not the brightest, let's pick this one. And for midtones, maybe this one. Turn off the adjustment and now we crank up blend with original. So now the triton effect does nothing and we want to dial it down until it looks just right. I think right about here is good. Okay, the next thing would be grain. Let's add grain. We have to zoom it in, maybe we can turn down the intensity. Maybe let's turn down the size, oh, that's too much. Because it's really not a noisy image. So what you can do is go through channels and compare noise on every channel to see if they match. And if any one of them stands out, just go to channel intensities or size and match them as best as you can. But right here, I think this looks Okay, I'm looking at this noise. Yeah, that should be good. If you don't want to mess with add grain effect, you can just pick noise and crank it up to about four. If it's not a really noisy footage, the four should be fine. 
but add grain will do. So let's see how it looks now. Definitely looks better. So let's see before and after. Okay, so these are my top five things to look for. However, it's still a little bit too clean for me. So what I want to do is rough it up a little bit and we can do that by adding a texture. So to do that, we pre-compose this to make the texture move with the logo. So I have a billboard texture. So let's put it below our layer. Maybe make it a lot smaller. Put it maybe right here. We can turn it off and use the CC glass effect. The CC glass effect will allow us to use the texture as a bump map. So let's pick the texture, turn displacement to zero, softness to zero. And I want to pre-compose that texture and move all attributes. So now let's adjust the lighting because it's coming from above. Yeah, that looks about right. It gave us a nice texture. So I'm pretty happy with that. One more thing we want to add is a contact shadow and there are quite a few ways, but I usually just duplicate the layer, grab the bottom one, remove everything but the corner pin, add a tint effect, use all black so it's completely black and add the Gaussian blur. Crank it up to maybe 25 in that case maybe a little more and turn on the opacity of the shadow to about let's just say 80. So there you go. This is after, this is before. So let's see the whole thing. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on. For the next shot, we have a green screen of a phone. I already tracked using Mocha as well. And in the Mocha AE lesson, you have the exact guide on how to put in the screen onto the phone. So go check it out if you don't know how to do that. But this is how it looks right now. So there are no effects. It's just a rough screenshot pasted over the phone. So what I want to do is first put the phone underneath our layer and use the key light and pick our green. And what that did is it kept the reflection. So let's see, it already looks good. However, our key affected our grass. This is because it's similar green to our screen. So to prevent that, we have to create a mask, so-called garbage mask. So a really rough one, but watch out to not include the grass. Select to none, right click on the mask and select track mask. Now that it's done, go to inside mask in the key light Select our mask and select invert if you didn't have it checked. So now looks good. So let's go through our checklist. I do think it's a little too sharp. So let's add our Gaussian blur. Two pixels seem about right. Before and after, it's a small difference, but it's visible. Next one is tint, so our saturation. This red is definitely too saturated. So let's add tint and pull it down to 30% right about there. Before, after, add our adjustment layer, add tint and see if anything's too bright. I think this part and this part is a little too bright, but nothing major. Just add levels and pull down the white until it looks right. So before and after, looks good. So now, now let's add the tritone. And because this is a screen and it emits light by itself, it won't be affected as much, but a little bit to match the scene should be added. Add Gaussian repeat edge pixels and blur it. Okay, let's sample shadows. I think this is the, our darkest part. Let's find highlights. There's not really many highlights here, but I'm assuming this would be the brightest. And midtones, that would be my jacket. So let's turn off the adjustment layer and see how much we can blend it. Yeah, that looks good. And now, how about this time we'll use noise. Let's see closer how it looks. Let's add about 4%. Not more. Do we have any noisy areas? Maybe around here. And this seems to be matching okay. So now let's check out our final version. So this is after. And this is before. 
Unfortunately, I see tons of replacements that look like this. Please don't do that. It looks very amateurish and you can tell right away that it's replaced. Okay, just to recap again, make sure that the composite is not too sharp because usually artificial image is way sharper than our footage. Also make sure that our composite is not too bright and fits the scene. And for example, if your composite is far away, make sure the black levels are raised properly so it reflects the atmospheric haze that you see in reality. Then make sure the colors match. Also make sure it's not too saturated. And then in the end, if it's a static image, add grain, if it's a free frame you can first remove the original noise and then add again so it's moving and we don't stack up the noises over each other and then in the end add some texture add imperfections and that's it these are my top five things to remember when compositing in an image well actually more than five but five sounds better right and there you have it now you can actually make your composites look good hit me up with any questions you may have and i'll see you in the next one